Welcome to another edition of the Sim Racing Garage. I'm Barry Rowland, and in this edition, we'll be reviewing the GT Paddle Kit for Thrustmaster wheels from SimAbility. The guys at SimAbility specialize in making high quality hand controls for sim racers, allowing just about anyone to race competitively in the sim or driving game of their choice. Now, after speaking with Glenn Sidman, who is the owner of SimAbility, he graciously agreed to donate this kit along with a T300 wheelbase that the SRG will be providing. I will be installing this unit on that T300 wheelbase and then shipping it off to our contest winner, Nate Colita, who lives in Nebraska. So let's get to it. Okay, so now let's do the closer look segment of our video. And first of all, we'll just look at the main paddle unit here. And first off, we'll just go around everything and just point out some of the things that I noticed as far as features. And overall, right away, as soon as you get this in your hand, it just feels like a nice, well done, well designed and implemented uh, piece of kit here. You know, hats off to the guys at SimAbility. have done a great job here. Glenn has really done a great job with this. And anyway, uh, we'll start with the main plate here that everything else is attached to. And it's a quarter inch piece of aluminum. And you can see it's got some machining on both sides of it. We've got some cutouts here that we use for, for actually, you'll see what we use that for once we actually get to the assembly part. And we've got holes drilled and tapped so we can hold different brackets that hold different things. Um, in the front, we've got the casing that holds the wiring and the electronics. And of course it has the SimAbility logo etched into it. Very nice touch there. And on this plate, you can see that because of, obviously, the electronics, we're going to be mounting something, the steering wheel, up against this plate or the hub, whichever the case may be. He's milled out. See how flat that is where these wires are here? These wires are coming out from these sensors that are inside the case. And by the way, these are not potentiometers. They are actually hall sensors in here, which are a really, really great idea because, yeah, hall sensors don't touch anything. There's no moving parts wearing against each other, so like a potentiometer would be. So, yeah, this is really a great function here or, as far as using the hall sensors. Really long life cycle, I would imagine. But anyway, back to the channels they've actually milled into this plate so that they can route these cables. So it's a good cable management channel there. So it comes up from the sensor, I imagine, on each side, and then it goes into some way to get all the wires put together. But we'll see that in a minute. Now, while we're on the back, these pieces right here are actually holding the stops. These pieces that are bolted to the back here are holding the stops for the paddle, the return stops. You can see how when it comes back, it actually stops here. And he's using some nice set screws here. And on the tip of these set screws, now he could have just left it metal to metal here. But you, if you'll see here, there is actually, actually let me show you the front because they're exposed. The front ones are the same thing. And you can see right there, see there's a little, I don't know how well this is going to show up, but there's a little green bit here. And that's a piece of nylon on the tip of these set screws. So when you're hitting anything, well, let's use a throttle over here. If you're hitting anything, there's not a, a metallic noise that would be there with this aluminum bumping up against those steel set screws in there. So yeah, and again, little things, little attention to detail like that is very cool. And you can see we got them on there. So that they make noise when they come back, but yeah, nothing like it would be if it was just metal to metal there. And these set screws, speaking of them, they're adjustable and it doesn't have a lot of adjustability left here, it looks like. So we could get another eighth inch, I think, as far as pushing this paddle forward if you needed to. S but, you know, we'll just have to wait and see. Everybody's in an individual and yeah, maybe they want it to come back even further than it is now. So again, all this is adjustable though, which this, unit was intended for as far as the use and the people that will be using it yeah you need maximum adjustability in everything on here so that you can fine-tune this to try to make it as universal for everyone as it can be and still be personally tunable to each individual so yeah i really like that the way that he's doing this we've got carbon fiber paddles back here they're three mil thick nice weave there's no breaks in the weave very nice consistent weave in this carbon fiber and we have a carbon fiber piece over here that's just covering and acting as a cable gable for the wiring that comes out and goes into this DIN plug here. And this DIN plug is nice. It's got one of those locking collars on it that screws onto the other side. And we'll take a closer look at that later on. And 
What else we want to see here on the back? Oh yes, the panels actually, if you can see here, they've got a, a pretty good amount of adjustability to them, it looks like. So we can slide them in and out to, again, better fit the individual's needs. Now, what else are we going to look around the back here? Well, we can see the brake thing on the back, but we'll wait. But again, all of this is, is adjustable as far as these little bits here for the front stops or when we're actually using a paddle. And you can see that that front stop here, see it's the one I showed you where it had the green top before, and it's hitting there. So we can actually make it go a little bit for, forward more if we back that set screw out. And, and again, you can probably imagine if you go in here and look, you can turn these bars here that are holding those set screws and change the angle of that stop also. Again, adjustability where everywhere you look on this unit. Now, looking at the front, this is the first thing a lot of people will notice, obviously, is this big brass screw sitting on here. It has a nice knurled piece on it. So you can see that there. It's got a spring on this side so we can maintain tension so you don't have to put a lock nut on there. And on the other side, obviously, we can see the actual threads that don't have a spring on it and a rubber bumper right here. So how this brake works, and of course, obviously, don't forget the stop here, all right, this little metal bar here. So the brake is actually, I have it adjusted, and you can actually back this off, and you can see how it's very easy to move these handles, both of these handles, and it needs to be easy so that you can regulate, like especially when you're over here on the throttle, you want to be able to modulate that throttle very gently when you're in a turn, coming out of a turn. And you're able to do that with this. I can imagine, especially once it's mounted to the wheel, it feels very smooth. There's no grinding or anything. It's just a very smooth pull there. Uh, it, I'm sure it's some bearings in there that this is mounted on. Anyway, so the brake, obviously once we mash, we can adjust the free travel on the brake to whatever we want it to be. If you want it to have some play in it, or if you don't, you can just screw this back down. I'm gonna screw it down this way a little faster and get my f finger under there. And now it's, it's harder. You can see it actually how that works there. It's pushing up against that bumper. And there's other bumpers included in the kit too, a different durometer rating. So yeah, if you need something a little harder or maybe even softer, I'm not sure what the, how the durometers are running here, then you just need to swap that out. Now let's say that if you wanted to use this instead of, this is a pretty standard configuration the way it comes from the factory. And that is the throttles on the right and the brake is on the left, similar to motorcycles, ATVs, you know, things like that. Usually the throttle is on the right hand side, but you can actually flip this around. Again, a major part of the adjustability is being able to change which side is actually doing the braking or throttle. And all you have to do is you would take this main bar here and inside, I'm pretty sure there's another set screw in there or, or a screw or something holding this bar and we'll loosen that up and be able to turn this mechanism over to the other side. Then we take this stop that this bumper is resting up against and we move it over to this side. And you can see the holes here on this side of the lever over here where the throttle is. And we have two holes that we can mount it to. And actually, I'll need to spin it around and you can actually see in this one that the screw hole, the screw is actually in that bottom hole there. But you could move it up to this top hole. And of course, move it whichever one you want to on this side if we're changing the direction of it. Right. Anything else you want to see here? The cable itself, very nice. It's got that silky smooth. It's not like rubbery, sticky feel to it. It's got kind of a silky, very, very flexible, bendable feel to it. I really like this cable. It's a, a, a really a high quality cable. And again, at the end, we have this DIN plug that's going to plug into the controller box that we'll see in a minute. Now, while we're here, I thought I'd go ahead real quick, and there's only four screws here, and I believe they're 2.0 mil. And what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull this cover off so we can see what's going on. And really, because that's about the extent of the look inside of a unit like this, so we might as well go ahead and do that while we're doing the closer look. And just bear with me here, and we'll get these other two screws out. Very simple to do this. And plus, we'll get to see some other things inside. All right, so the, this cap just comes right off, just like that. And it's a thin piece of aluminum. And here's the interesting part. So here we have the shafts that are rotating. We use this, the throttle because it's easier to move that further. And you can see as I move that, there's actually, I'm guessing this is the magnet part right here, this here. And as we move that, 
the field changes against the sensor down here. Could be wrong, could be the magnetic field down there, but I'm pretty sure the sensor's here and this is the magnet providing the field. And as that rotates, and again, it's rotating very nicely here, very smooth, just very, like I, like I said, just one of those things when you get it and you're using it, you go, man, this is really a nice precision type lever here. And as that magnet rotates around, the magnetic field will affect the hall sensor, and the hall sensor will know it's moving. And based on how we calibrated it, it'll know where this lever is, and that's how that works. And it looks like we have the wires put together here, and then they're actually going to a plug right here. And the plug is, on the other side of that, is where this bottom cable is coming out. So yeah. Oh, here's the grub screw. Actually, you don't have to take this cover off. There's the... Uh, grub screw or set screw that we would loosen to actually move this over to one side or the other depending on where you wanted your brake to be. Right, so not much else to see there. We'll set this aside and because we have screws laying around we'll go ahead and throw them in here. Oh by the way you see how these screws are rolling around? That means stainless. So these are stainless steel screws. Very nice. I, I like it when I see they just go to the extra expense for, instead of just a regular steel they're using stainless. Right, so let's get some of the other important parts here. Now these are the actual gear shifters that we're going to be replacing on the actual steering wheel. And these are nice carbon units also, just like the carbon units that are on the brake and the throttle. And these are aluminum pieces here that are actually matching the type of shape that is inside the wheel with the current shifters, and we'll see that once we get there. We've got some aluminum standoffs here, and we have screws on both sides. Now there is an adjustability as far as this handle is concerned, as you can see, it can go from one side or the other just by loosening this, it'll pivot here. And then we loosen that, it'll slide back and forth, depending on where you want that paddle to be for your fingers. Again, everywhere you look, there's adjustments on this stuff. So, and you can actually, I would imagine it wouldn't be too much trouble just finding another spacer or he, uh, you know, these guys might actually have some other spacers if you need to adjust the reach either out or in as far as for your shifter paddle. Very simple looking the way they did this, but very effective. I like that. Right. And the finish again on this carbon fiber is very nice. Well done. Just polished on the edges. Those are the shifters. Here is the controller box. Now the controller box is what we plugged this cable in that we were looking at a minute ago. Get my screws out of the way here. And it is indexed. You can see it's got this little groove in it. And there is another groove inside of here, right on the bottom part here. So you guys see that. And then once you match those up, you just plug it in like that. And now we can tighten it down with the ring so it won't go flying around on us as far as coming off. Very nice. I, I really like when I see, see, like again, I've said before here, I'll probably say it again a few times. This is really nicely done. Little bits like that really matter in the whole package. It just comes together so well. Right, so we'll go ahead and plug that. Now on the other side of this controller is a plug, another dim plug, that's going to the back of our Thrustmaster wheelbase, where the pedals plug is. And we, we just plug the cable in. Now there's two cables here. And they have matching dim plugs that we'll plug into our controller here, okay? And we have a black one, and one has a red band on it. Now, the red band is if we want to, remember I tell you, we can actually easily swap this around as far as the brake being on the right-hand side and then bringing the throttle over here to the left-hand side. If you did that, you would run this cable because this is the cable that has the wiring or the pinout that makes that happen, right? Because if you're changing things around, you need to change the pinout too. So that this part of the cable, where our little RJ12 plug is, will be pinned differently so that the wheel base over there can still communicate properly and get the right signals on the right pins. So we have two of these cables, right? And let's go ahead and put this up. So again, it's a simple matter of just taking and making sure we plug it in the right way. And once it's plugged in, I better get it plugged in the right way here. The flat part here goes straight up towards this little shunt and just plug it in there. And then we'll plug the other end into the wheel base. And also on this controller, we'll see some, looks like some 3M double-sided tape so that we can stick this somewhere close to the wheel or on the wheel housing if you want, as long as you're careful that you don't put it somewhere where it's going to be interfering with some movement. You have to be careful with that. 
and yeah, let's go ahead and plug this. Now, cool thing about this controller box, this is one that actually has the capacity to have another analog signal, like a clutch or a handbrake, put into it. But here's the thing, if we're only using, in this case we are, using throttle and brake, then you have to tell the wheelbase that there's no clutch, because it's assuming there is one, and it doesn't like that. <laughs> we might get, you get some, some strange things happening, apparently. So what we do is put this, or what they do, is they put this little stereo plug, and it acts as a shunt. So once we plug this into this, and you can see, it's not going to be very easy to see that, but there's some wires coming off this plug here. There's a white one, and it looks like maybe a red one. But anyway, the wires are coming off this plug. So what this is going to do is when we plug it in, it's going to connect those wires in here so that the wheelbase sees this as there's no clutch. There's only a throttle pedal and a brake pedal. Right. So that's what you have to do. But the cool thing is here also, if you have or you want to use a clutch or you want to use a handbrake or something like that, you can actually plug it into this and use that third axis, if you will, because we're already using two of them in, in the wheelbase for our throttle and our brake, but you can use a third axis for a handbrake or a clutch. Very cool. And this is actually, again, everything is so nicely done here, high quality. And this is a sealed unit here. All the electronics are sealed in there. Very nicely done. And even the gold-plated shunt plug that you get is also very nicely done. Just high quality stuff everywhere you look. Right. So what else are we going to look at? Oh, the hub itself. This is the hub that we're going to be using to connect to the wheel, along with the existing hub that's already on the wheel. And we'll see how that works once we do the actual installation. And this is a very hard plastic material. It almost has a tink to it. So it's very hard, yet it almost feels like it's got some kind of a rubbery texture to it. And it's got some spacers here that we're going to need, or standoffs, if you will, so that... It, it spaces itself properly on the wheel or actually on the rim back there. And also, if you'll notice, there is a slot here in the back of this, and we'll be referring to that again later on as we're doing the installation. And that's acting as a lineup hole or a keyway, if you will, to, it's like we got a little extra plastic there, a little keyway that will index this for us so we make sure we get this properly installed the first time. <laughs> I have to take it apart and re-, and, and re angle this thing but it also lets us give us the ability that we can change the way that this whole setup is oriented typically you'll have it oriented like this most people I imagine but you could make it off to the side if you needed to for some reason and you could actually mount it upside down if you wanted to so we can mount it any way we want to to the wheel again another testament to the thought that went into this kit right we get some wrenches some allen wrenches and I'm not going to be using these, but it's nice to know that the kit has the Allen wrenches for every screw in this kit so that we can turn them and make them work. Here are the other bumpers, and the instructions say that this one with the red on it is actually an 80A shore rating for the durometer, and the other one is a 60. Now, it doesn't say what the one on that's currently on there, but I don't know if it's going to be softer or harder. But for sure, if you don't like the one that's come stock uh, attached to this, then all you have to do is replace it with one of these. And we have three flathead screws, and we're going to need these because, remember, we're putting the spacer in there, and to get everything put together and tidied back up, we're going to need longer screws to do that with. Right. And I think that's it. That's all there is the kit, or to the kit, rather. Again, well done. As you can see, this is all really nicely done, machined aluminum. I, I really like the way that Glenn has done this. It's, I, I really, you know, most things I look at, I go, well, why don't you do it this way or do it that way? But I tell you, I'm, I'm having trouble finding something to say, like, mm, maybe you should have done it the other way. Well, one more thing to note. If you look on his site, they're actually having a plate that he makes that can attach to these three screws here. So we have this plastic big plastic plate looking thing that you can actually attach like a cell phone to and use it as a, um, a some kind of a gauge you know or a dashboard or whatever or some other you know, information that you want to put on that so it's a handy place to put that because I know I used to run a cell phone on top of my wheel with a dashboard on it just so I could see some information on it so yeah it's nice again thinking about what some might, might want to do with one of these in the future yeah I really like this okay so that's it. That's all for the closer look. And now we'll get to the fun part. And what we're going to do is 
attach it to our rim and get everything back together. And then once that's done, we'll go to the next segment and we'll see how everything works. And hopefully I'll do this right and everything will work. <laughs> so now let's get this kit installed. First off, we have to take some screws off the wheel because we're going to be disassembling this wheel. And we have to take these two on the top out, this one on the left and the right, and then this one on the bottom. We don't have to take the rest of them out. And that's going to disengage our hub back here. And you'll see that after I do that. So let's go ahead and get these screws out. These should come out pretty quickly so we don't have to use our power driver. And there's only three of them. And these are steel screws because you get to hear the ding when I put it in that magnetic tray. <laughs> so one more and then this hub should come out. Now remember on this hub there's an electrical connector that connects to the wheelbase. Well there goes everything. And there's a little dim plug back there. And that means, obviously, there's going to be a cable back there going to the main board on the wheel itself. And what we'll do is, very gently, now this is loose, we should be able to see how it just kind of gently pull it right out. And we should see, there's the three guides or spacers, and you can see the wire there. Right, so I'm also going to show you inside of this wheel. Now see how this plug is, is looking? There's no way for me to get that plug loose. Actually. I could probably get it loose just by putting something get there's without I just don't want to put any tension on this wire and I could probably get something in there on each side and just go back and forth ease that plug out and get it out but then putting it back in is going to be problematic and some of these thrustmaster wheels don't have it like that they actually have the plug sitting straight up so you can just plug it just like that but we're going to be replacing the shifters anyway on this insulation so this cover is going to have to come off either way so that's what we're going to do. And to take the cover off, we've got four screws around the perimeter here. And I've got three more screws, one in the hole here on each side of the paddle shifter. And then, of course, one down here. And these are machine screws because they're going in metal. And the four on the outside are actually those plastic screws. So to do that, I am going to use, let me put this back in here so it's in the right orientation. To do that, I am going to use my driver because that'll make things go a lot quicker. So we'll go ahead and pull all the screws out now. All right, so we've got all the screws loose. Now, two of them did not come out, or maybe it was just one of them. Yeah, one of them didn't come out, and that's the one over here on this shifter. And that happens sometimes, but all you gotta do is be careful when you do it, obviously, and we'll just turn this upside down and shake a little bit and there it goes. So that's the screw and again these three screws, the shifters and on the bottom here are these little Phillips screws like this and they have a machine thread on them. See that th little thread there? So that lets us know it's going into metal. The other four screws are obviously Phillips also because they use the same bit and but they have that aggressive plastic thread on it so we know we're going into plastic with these screws. Right. So now, as you can see before, this thing is ready to fall off. And so I'm going to very carefully, I'm going to orient it this way. And I'm just going to kind of lean it up and see if I can get to that plug that I know is in there. And you can see there's the plug right there. And all I'm going to do is I usually just take a fingernail and pry on each side of this plug gently and kind of work it out. Bingo. There we go. Easy enough, right? And we've already loosened the hub up from this assembly where the shifters are, so I should just be able to pull this out very carefully, and there we have it. So there's our wire, our plug that's on the other side of that den, and now we can set this aside. And we'll take a quick look at the back of the wheel. And not much to see here really because it's just a, a main board or a circuit board PCB and it's got these shifters here with the little springs on them. You can hear that when I press on it. So that's the shifter button. We've got one on each side. Right. So now what we're going to do is figure out what we want to do on if you didn't have shifters to put in and you're just going to 
use the brake and the throttle, this is all you'd have to do, and then you'd go back in and start the reassembly process. But we are gonna be putting these shifters in, these very cool carbon fiber deals, okay? Now, there are two plastic shields here over the shifter mechanism. And you can see these little pieces here, there's actually springs in them, right? So these are gonna be under pressure, these plastic lids. So when we take them apart or loose, they're gonna to wanna to take off on us. So you wanna put a thumb on there or something as you're doing that, and I'll show you how I do it And as I'm taking the screws out. And there's only four screws here, you can see there. I got two down here and two up here. And yeah, that's, I'm just gonna kinda of hold it down and pull all the screws out, and then I'll gently let that lid back off of those springs, and hopefully they won't go flying everywhere. So let's see how that works. Now I'm going to put my thumb on here and hold it while I loosen up the two screws that are capturing those springs. All right, so now I'm going to let pressure off of this cap very gently. And see, it doesn't really go that far when I took the pressure off. So now we should just be able to pull this straight up and expose the springs. And that's what we'll do. There we go. See, it's just a little molded plastic piece there. We'll put that aside. And then we have our two springs, which fall right away. <laughs> now, these metal springs, obviously we're gonna be using them again, so you don't wanna lose them, don't wanna go anywhere. So we'll throw them in the magnetic dish here. And now we have the shifter loose, the paddle itself. And you can see it's kind of flopping around in there, but it won't just come right out. There's another plate that is sitting on top of the metal part of this shifter paddle. And these two screws are holding it on there. And if you'll notice, while we're at looking at it, that the, there's these square, or rather cross, or plus signs of plastic protruding from this plate. And that's to use, set of, they use, actually use these as guides for the springs when we seat them down or set them back down on here when we install it. And there's another guide here that's in the metal part of this shifter, this other little plus sign. Okay, so we can go ahead and take that out and that'll be pretty quick. Now, these are actually machine screws because there's a metal shifter and the metal shifter plate going back in is gonna be the same. So yeah, you can see the difference in that little screw there and of course it's the Phillips head. Right, now that we got that loose, we can pull this plate out that was on top of the actual metal shifter. See the metal shifter piece there? And this plate was just kind of sitting on top of that, as we saw before. That was the top, and this was the bottom that was actually against that shifter plate. And you can see it has its own little guide piece in there also. So I have to just be mindful of this stuff as we're taking it apart, so when we go back in, we can see that. Right, so now when I take this out, here's the shifter paddle itself. And not much to see here, just a piece of steel, it's not aluminum, and one thing to make note of here, and this is an option that you can do that I am going to do because I like to do little things like this. You can see these rubber bits here. This is actually a strip of rubber here, and there's another strip of rubber right there. And what I'm going to do is take a heat gun and get the glue nice and loose under there, and then take, carefully take these off and try to maintain the glue that's on it. And then I'm going to put these back on the shifter that I put in its place. And this is just injection molded plastic, so it probably won't be making a lot of noise when the shifter's in here. Let me see if I can get it to go in here. This might be the wrong one, though. Yeah, it goes in there like that. Yeah, so that's upside down, so that's the wrong one. So we're gonna use this other one, like this. There we go, and that's the one we want. But, yeah, there is some noise there when it contacts that plastic. And, you know, you may or may not be bothered by something like that, but because this is the giveaway wheel and we're giving this away, then I just want to do the, go the extra mile here, or not really extra mile, but just do a little extra just to, I don't want to put that rubber piece back on where it's going to make contact with the plastic up here and the plastic on the back when I reinstall this. Pretty simple to do. Once you have these rubber pieces off, and this is just a little trick I use for these occasions, get those little rubber pieces off. I've already taken them off one of the shifters, 
And when you take them off, you got to put them somewhere so they won't get away from you. And I just use this backing paper. And this is actually, if you get those packing slips, the plastic envelope type, the clear stuff that you can slide your packing label inside of, when you peel off the adhesive backing, you always end up with this piece of paper. See, it's kind of shiny. And that's so that you can stick glue to it and it won't stick to anything. It'll come right off. So it serves a great purpose. And I can always keep a sheet of these tucked away somewhere so that when I take something off that has glue on it, it'll stick to that. So you can see how shiny that is with the glue still on it. Let's see if you can, there you go. See that shine there? So the glue is still on here and it should stick to this aluminum rather nicely. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go ahead and peel one of these off, set it aside, and then go ahead and put this piece of rubber on there. Try to get it centered a little bit where I think it's gonna hit press it on. So now we have the rubber on there. And again, you don't have to do this, but and when this lines up with the holes and I'm using it, now uh, how well you'll be able to see this. Let me show you let's see how about that way. Anyway, try it this way. <laughs> Get my fat fingers out of the way. But you can see there's the there's the rubber piece right there. And so now when it's actually hitting the plastic it's not making that clinky noise, right? So again, it's just a little something extra I like to do when I'm putting stuff together. And there's actually a place where it's hitting in the back here too. And because there's a back piece on the shifter itself that we took out, I'm gonna kind of eyeball it and then figure out where I need to put this piece on the back of this paddle. I think it's right about here. And you can actually move this around a little bit once you get it on if it's not perfect. I'm thinking it's right about there. And it can be a little fiddly, but again, just take your time, have a little patience, press that on there. Now put it back in, test the fit. And that looks, yep, it looks like it's gonna be okay that way. I'll give you a side angle. Might be able to see it better there, there it is. So now we have it only, not only going this way, but we have it on the return too just the way, the same way it's on the actual original paddle. So again, not something that you have to do for this insulation, but just that little bit of extra I like to do. So now we're actually going to reassemble this. And remember, on the back part, the flat part of this, there's that plus sign, right? And that's going to fit into the hole here, that big hole. And then we got our little holes, and they actually, actually have machined, they actually been tapped with threads, so they will take our little screws that we took out. So let's see how well this is going to work. This is kind of just falls down on top of it and you kind of jiggle it around a little bit until you can jiggle this paddle around a little bit until it falls into that other side of this plus sign right that's in the hole of the paddle now so now the paddle is not moving okay you can't move it in and out so you know it fell into the hole so holding this assembly together and I don't know how well I'm going to be able to show you this as far as what I'm doing Maybe if I turn it this way now I'm going to put these screws back in these little Phillips machine screws and I'm not going to be able to show you me putting it in the hole but where's my I'm going to use a hand screwdriver for this because when I put fasteners back on I actually can put it on with the electric driver if you get the clutch set properly but for this instance I only have two screws and they're going in pretty quick and when I do use the power driver I'll always come back with a hand fastener or a fan a hand wrench being you know, if it's a uh, hex or a screwdriver if it's a flathead or a Phillips and hand torque it down because no matter what I set this driver clutch at it I always go real light on it because I don't want to strip anything out especially when you're using you're using screws going back into plastic it's very easy to do so when I have that finished then I can actually use my feel of how much that should be torqued down because you don't want to overdo it and that seems pretty good so now we've got the plastic piece back in right simple enough and now that shifter will act like it's supposed to. So now all we have to do is get our springs back into the assembly. Let me slide over here. So I take my springs out of my little magnetic dish, and it really doesn't matter which way these springs go because they both have the little rod end that ends on these. When they wrap these up, they always have to cut them somewhere. And you can see, I don't know how well you see this, but there's a little end there, okay? Yeah, but it's the same on both sides. So it really doesn't matter which way we're actually going to be doing this. 
So we'll just put them down again on those big plus signs that are protruding out there. They're acting as guides to set them down or seat them. And just set them one on touch of each, or one on top of each, rather. Right, so now all we have to do is put our cap back in. Another thing to notice about the cap is they've got these little loops in here. See these right here? And on this hub, there are tabs on the hub right in here. They're going to capture those loops. Just something else that'll help guide this down as we're pressing down against that spring pressure and putting this back together. So now we can do that. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these two top screws in first, all right? Because they're ones that are they're actually right next to the springs, and they will hold the best, I think. So it's just a matter of setting this down without making those springs fall over. And it's easy to do, so it might, it might take you a couple of attempts. And then we just press it down like this. And what I'll do is probably just put my thumb on it like I did before and kind of eyeball it as I'm doing that to try to get these holes to line up to where I need them to be. And then we're going to use those Phillips screws with the aggressive thread on them. And again, I'm going to put the ones next to the springs in first. If we can do this without everything falling apart. And again, this is not that hard. It just takes a little patience. And you want to make sure you get these things started right because you don't want to strip anything out. There's one in. Actually, you know what? I'm glad you guys saw this. See, that's the black screw. We took out silver screws here. <laughs> so we make sure you put the same screw back in. <laughs> because then you'll end up with one extra silver screw and wondering, well, what the heck? How did that happen? <laughs> so anyway, make sure you get the silver screws for this piece. All right, so I have that far enough in on one side to capture that spring, and then we'll just go ahead and put it the other screw in, and it should capture the other spring. If I can get this star right. See, my tip's are magnetic, so it can be problematic when you're trying to put the tip on. It's a good thing and a bad thing, because sometimes it'll pull a screw out when you don't want it to. So I'm just going to kind of line it up. See if I can get it. There we go. Sometimes you can just go sideways with it and get it lined up. And there we have it. Easy enough. So you can see now those springs are captured. And now it's, I can let it go and I can actually put the other screws in without fiddling and dropping everything everywhere and just run these other screws in at your leisure. So once these screws are in, so we can, and you want to get these other screws when you put them, when you get these screws tightened up, you want to leave them a little loose because you want to be able to move these plates around a little bit to get these holes lined up properly. All right. So you want to leave these, you don't want to get them real tight at first. You just want to make sure, because this, you can see I can still move this around a little bit. So that's good, so I can actually get my holes lined up where I need them to be. And then we can go ahead and put our screws in. All right, one more screw, and this assembly should be back together so it's working properly. And we are going to test it, of course, before we put it together. And, of course, we still have to put the other shifter on. But... Yeah, and then we're hand torquing again, just so we don't, and this is really, it's, it's worse in plastic than it is in metal, to make sure you don't over torque this, because you will rip the threads out of that plastic, and then you're, you got a problem, actually, especially with something that's under spring tension. There we go. That feels about right. There we go. So now our shifter is in. Wasn't that hard. And you can see it's actually quieter. And it's quiet like this one is over here. Actually, it's even quieter than that one. <laughs> Maybe I, I'll, I'll line my rubber bits better than they do at the factory. I don't know. But yeah, that sounds pretty good. And now we have our shifter functionality. And again, we can rotate this. It has the adjustment on it back here. We can rotate it back and forth to do what we need to do. Right. So what we're going to do is come back after I have installed the other shifter paddle. Right, so we've got the other shifter lever on, and you can see it's nice, nice and quiet. We actually are using them because of the little rubber stoppers or rubber pieces that I took off the other shifters and put in there. You can see that in there. Works out pretty good. So now, really, it's not much left to do here. It's going to be pretty easy. We have to mount this piece, of course, 
And we want to mount that in an orientation to where we're pulling towards it. So you want to flip it around and get it messed up. Easy way to tell is this assimilability needs to be to the front. So if we had the wheel here like this at the front of the wheel, then we want it to be like this when it's bolted on. Okay. So just have to keep these little things like that in mind because you'd be surprised how easy it is to, to get this confused or messed up while you're doing something else and you're not thinking about what you're doing. So first thing is this housing is going to have to go back on and we're going to have to get everything put back together. So here's the way that I'm going to do this. I have to get this assembly built before I can put it back on the wheel because of the way the wire plug is on this. So easy enough. Now remember the hub that we saw in the closer look and it has that little keyway here. That means the top, right? It's not, and it actually is going to go into the little slot that's in the hub up here. See that little slot right there? So we wanna make sure this slot goes to that slot. And we just kind of insert that like that, press it in, and there we go. Couldn't be easier, right? Now, this assembly is going to be going on the back of it. But what I'm going to do first is take the hub that we took off initially that has the wire plug in it, of course, the DIM plug, the original hub, and I want to get that. You see, this has a keyway on it, too, that was going into this piece. But now, of course, we have this extension or spacer in here now, so we're just going to use it as a guide to make sure that we're right ways up <laughs> when we're putting it back together and we're putting it on the back of this. So first thing, of course, you want to get the plug through the hole, easy as can be. No big deal. Just make sure that you don't kink it or anything. I kind of pull in a little bit as I'm getting this lined up. And now I'll just line up the three prongs there, right, to the holes that are corresponding in this metal plate. And just kind of wiggle it back and forth till it goes in. And it goes in pretty easily. There we go. There you have it. And you can see the pieces hanging out there. And this is where we're going to be putting our screws back in. And we have our plug cleared. So now we have to take this assembly and put it on the shifter assembly. And again, you want to make sure that you're not getting this plug pinched in anywhere in here. So I just kind of feed it in there a little bit. And then I'll just gently pull it through the other end with some extra fingers here. And then I can line up those spacers to that hub and kind of just gently wiggle it so it goes back in. I kind of just shuffle it back and forth. So we're pinching this plate in between them. There we go. And there we have it. We have our plug loose, ready to go. We have our spacer sticking out where the screws are going to go in when we reattach this to the wheel. And we have this oriented properly because the widest space here that you see there, you see how these spaces are a little bit thinner than this top wide one. That's the top of the wheel hub over there on the wheelbase. Right. So it's all put together now and ready to go back on. And the only trick left is, remember, it's not really a trick. We have these guys to avoid as we're going back on. And we don't want to mess those springs up or pinch them or bind them up in any way so that the shifters work correctly when we get it back in there. So, and I'm also going to have to put the plug back in before I set it back down on top, or as I'm setting it down on top, I guess is the best way to put it. Let's get the cord over here. And I'm just going to kind of tilt it this way so you can get you guys to get a look at this. And then I'll take the plug first and plug it in. And remember the plug orientation when you take it out. If you need to, take a, a picture with your phone or something, but I, I know which way this is going. And these little silver tabs you see on the plug, let's see if you see them right in the plug there. I don't know if I can get the light to him so they light up. Anyway, you can see these little silver things, and they need to be facing up as the plug goes in. So I'll just typically just get the plug lined up, and then take my two fingers like this and take my thumb on the bottom part of this plug and just kind of squeeze it together. Maybe rock it a little bit as it's going in. And there you go. That looks good. You might want to put a piece of hot glue on that if you want, but I'm not going to worry about that right now. It looks pretty good. Now, when I'm putting this back on, the only thing I'm worried about again is these switches, right? So I'm going to kind of lean over and look directly down on top of this as I'm putting it on to make sure I see the screw holes are lining up. And if the screw holes are lining up, then those springs should be lining up on the shifter buttons. And there we go. 
I push down on it a little bit, make sure everything is secured as if I have it all bolted back already. And I don't, but it, it just so it simulates that. And we got a click. So you want to check, make sure you're hearing a click. That means we're actuating those buttons on that PCB board in there, and everything should be good to go. This is working good, our brake paddle. Everything is free, there's nothing binding up. So at this minute, I'm gonna say we're looking pretty good. So what we wanna do now is obviously put all our screws back on. And there's only one thing here with these screws is the whole access. And fortunately, let me get my little, we can loosen up. These shifters tend to interfere, tilt this up without, I guess, without messing anything up with the screw going into this side here, all right, down in there, because of the angle. But we can tilt this, and I've already loosened this up. You loosen this bottom one here so it can pivot, then you loosen this one here, and it can move back and forth, just like if we were adjusting it for something. And you can push it all the way over this way, and it gives you a much better shot at the screw in there, okay? So, yeah, easy enough. Once we're at this stage, it's just a matter of putting all the screws back in, and then we'll flip it around and put the screws in the front and they're going to be these longer screws here all right so that's what we're going to do we're going to get our screws back in on the back then we'll flip it over we're going to put these screws in and when we come back we'll take a look at what we're left with okay we've got everything put back together everything went smoothly we just had to put the screws back in except for one thing now remember we saw how we could move these paddles to the side so we could access these screws all right that are in here but the problem is, there's another screw down here. And if this is sitting on top, yeah, it's like impossible to get to that screw. We can't leave it out. So, easy enough, we hadn't put these screws in to attach the whole unit to the rim yet. So we still were able to take this, and I got a little shot of it to show you here. And you see, I'm just tilting this whole assembly forward, and we have enough slack in our wire, it's not gonna bother anything. And then, of course, tighten the screw down, and everything's good to go. So. Now it's bolted down. Now we do have the front screws attached and everything's nice and tight and snug. Everything feels good. The shifters really feel good and they seem like right about where I would need them and that's fully out. So uh, somebody with longer fingers would probably want to dial them back in a little bit. The spacing seems good. Yeah, I kind of like it. I wouldn't have any problem and I won't have any problem because I'm going to actually use this wheel, see how it works, using this. And we have the brake down here, and now once this is assembled and it's a solid unit and everything's tightened down, torqued down properly, all the fasteners, it feels really good on the brake. It's not too hard, just a, enough feel, a progressive feel in it. It just feels good. It just really feels good as far as using a brake. I can't wait to try this out. However, the throttle. If I'm using shifters up here, and I'm usually using my index, if I'm holding the wheel and I'm shifting like this, I'm probably going to use my pinky for the throttle because that way I'm holding them through the wheel and I can still use the throttle real easily. But the problem is when I do that, you can see, let's see, it's actually hitting my fingers, right? But no problem. We have an adjustable set screw back here. Remember we saw that in the closer look and all I have to do, I've got a good quarter inch left here. So I'll just have to push that down, extend that down and out so it stops it sooner. And I think that'll probably get it to where it won't hit my fingers. I'm looking, I don't know if you guys can see, well, the brake's kind of interfering with it now that we have everything. No, there it is. So it's almost, the stop is right about there. Yeah. So I think that little bit more will probably help me out. And another thing, even if it's not long enough, I guarantee you I can find another set screw that's longer that will do the job. Guarantee it. Or maybe even Simability has something like that. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and get that tuned up before I actually put it on the, the wheelbase and attach the wheelbase to the rig and go and do some driving. So I'll get that sorted. So when we come back, we'll have this attached to the wheelbase. And yeah, I'm probably just going to have it mounted on the rig by then. And then we'll see some how it's mounted and how it looks on the rig. And then we'll do some driving. So now just a quick look at the settings in the wheel control panel for Thrustmaster's little driver here that you see. And of course I have the wheel over here in the control panel superimposed next to it. First off, you just want to check your buttons and shifters and make sure everything works. And if I go over here and do the hat, you can see that it is actually going around like it should. And I can work the buttons and everything seems to be working as it should. 
we'll go do the shifters and there's the one working and two right next to it. So everything looks good, but now we're gonna look at the analog axis. We'll do with the throttle first, which is the RZ axis. And you see if I pull this throttle handle here that that bar, that actual field fills up in that scale. And I actually had to adjust the stops out here probably didn't have to but it's a, i think it's a good way to send it off to nate to make sure at least that this is adjusted so when it hits the stop it is filling the bar up and it doesn't go any further than that even though you can probably calibrate it in the game to it really wouldn't make that much difference i think but it couldn't hurt to go ahead and set the stop up so the limit is where that field gets filled up and i did the same thing over at the brake handle if you saw the video where i was talking about the adjustments then I would have mentioned that this handle was actually hitting my fingers, or the brake handle was, when I was actually pulling it in. So it turns out that if you'll see the y-axis over there, it, I had adjusted the stop now to come out to stop the handle where it fills up the field just like I did with the throttle. And by coincidence, that also kept it from pinching my finger when I had my hand on the wheel. So it just worked out that way sometimes things just work out that way if you know what I mean <laughs> so anyway we have the stops adjusted properly they're filling up the axes as they should and you can see the clutch axis over there is not showing anything slider zero it's called and that's because we have our shunt plug in the controller box for the system and everything seems to be working just perfectly so now all we have to do is take the wheel we'll go ahead and mount it to the rig and start driving it and see how it does. So here we are at Sebring and iRacing in the Ferrari 488 GT car. And yeah, the first thing is when I was using this wheel is it just everything works so well. And it was very intuitive right, all, right from the start. I really didn't have too much difficulty with the throttle. And you can see I'm just catching slides here in the, in the rough turn 17 of Sebring. And I didn't have any problem modulating with the throttle. It has a very good tension dialed in, at least to me, in my opinion. It, it felt right out of the box, just like, you know, I, I was almost on, like on a motorcycle controlling that. Of course, I wasn't twisting a grip. I was using my fingers for the throttle. But yeah, it just felt really good the first time I used it. And really, Glenn has got this thing dialed in as far as the spring tension on the brake and the throttle. It's easy to use them, and you can, you can modulate easily. You can trail brake. Uh, it's just about getting used to the controls. Now the throttle and the shifter were the easiest to adjust to right off the bat and the brake was a little bit more difficult because I, I went back a couple of times and recalibrated in the eye racing just to get it to where I felt like my hand wanted it to be and then I, I was doing it much better once I got that dialed in but still the hardest part of for me was the brake and downshifting at the same time for some reason. Chewing gum and uh, rubbing the top of your head or something at the same time. When you first try that, it's, it's not that easy. It's a little difficult. But once I got some time in on it, it became much more intuitive. And you know, after a while, I wasn't really even thinking about it. And yeah, what can I say? It's just a, a great package, this setup. It, I've had a, a lot of fun using this. And as you can see driving, how I'm able to uh, regulate or modulate the throttle and the same way with the brake when I'm in a turn, I can just let off a little bit to get a little trail brake on it. But again, it's when you first get it in hand, it is, a, it is a, a little bit more difficult than driving with your feet, obviously. But I think anyone using this wheel is going to be able to come up to speed and be competitive racing in a simulator uh, pretty soon. It's just a matter of getting time on target, like I said before. And I really enjoyed using this control setup. And Nate is going to be one happy sim racer once he gets this wheel because this is really a nice setup. It's, uh, it's more than I thought it was going to be, even when I was doing the look inside and, and the configuration of it. it everything was nice, as, as I said before, as far as the controls. Everything's done so nicely, and the machining's done well. And it's just put together as a, well, as a great package. And, yeah, it really shows once you get it in hand and you're using it on a track. So, yeah, I actually had fun using this wheel. It, it, I, I put a lot of time in it, and I, I look up at the clock and say, oh, my gosh, I put that, I've been doing this for two hours. <laughs> but anyway, this is a great setup. Uh, you know, if you need something like this, uh, as far as in your racing simulation or driving in general, simulators uh, or games, then, yeah, I uh, 
100% recommend this setup because it just works so well. And yeah, I could see someone doing very well with this, no matter what car they were driving or what game they were driving. Right, so as you can probably tell, I'm really impressed with this. And yeah, again, Nate, you're gonna be a happy guy once you get this and start using it. And what we'll do next is just get to the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the Simability GT Paddles Kit for the Thrustmaster wheels. First, I would like to thank Glenn Sidman for donating this paddle kit that we are giving away to our contest winner, Nate Kalita. As mentioned in the intro segment of this video, I'll be shipping this T300 wheelbase and paddle kit out to Nate as soon as the review is published. So he should have it in hand in about a week or so. It's great to see fellow sim racers creating their own hardware solutions for other sim racers. Glenn Sidman has really done a great job here with this paddle kit. The design, materials, parts, and production quality of this unit are all top flight. Using hall sensors instead of potentiometers should give a very long life cycle to the end user. There is a large amount of adjustability built into these paddles, even making it relatively easy to swap the brake and throttle positions from left to right. Now, I was able to get everything dialed in to my liking and really didn't leave me wanting for more adjustments. Now, driving the T300 with this kit attached was easier than I thought it would be when I first saw pictures of it. The throttle and brake pedals had just the right amount of resistance to give me a good feel for what the paddle was doing without it tiring me out on long stints. I was able to modulate the throttle just as well as I could with my foot. And after some practice, was able to do the same with the brake paddle. Now, the replacement carbon shifter paddles seem to be just the right size and position just right to make it very easy to use them. Now, it did take me some time to adjust to using this kit. Being a motorcycle rider, adjusting to the throttle was rather instinctive for me, and the brake paddle itself did not take long to get used to once I had my preferred tension dialed in using the in-game settings of whatever game I was using. What gave me the most problem was adjusting to braking and downshifting at the same time with my left hand. But even though it felt quite foreign at first, I was able to manage it after 10 or so laps and improving as I spent more time with it. I was able to get within a couple of seconds actually of my best lap time when using pedals. And if this was the only way I raced, I think, I'm pretty sure anyway, <laughs> I would be able to improve even further. Which leads me to believe that you can be very competitive with this setup once you have spent some quality time with it. I think that most would agree that Glenn is building something special here with these hand control kits. And hats off again to him for donating this GT paddle kit. It's always a great feeling to help out a fellow sim racer whenever the opportunity presents itself. And don't forget to support what we do here at the SRG by hitting the subscribe button and visiting our website at simracinggarage.com where you can make a donation or buy an official Sim Racing Garage t-shirt with all proceeds going towards purchasing future Sim Racing hardware products for review right here on the SRG. I'm Barry Rowland and thanks again for watching the Sim Racing Garage channel.